Hi, it's Bill with Molly. This is a continuation of our story about piston rings. You know, we've covered a lot of things about piston rings, but so far we haven't mentioned end gap. And when you look at a piston with the rings installed, or you look at a ring in just in your hand, you'll notice that you can squeeze the ring and the gap on the end gets larger and smaller. Well, the reason for that, of course, is when we compress these rings and slide the piston down in a bore, they need to get smaller to fit in the bore. Now the reason for the gap there when it's installed in the bore is as the engine gets hot and expands, the piston expands, the block expands, the ring expands, we need some sort of gap there to allow for this expansion and contraction. Hence we have this thing called ring end gap. Now first of all, when you buy a piston from us with the rings already installed, like this little piston right here, you can trust that Molly's already taken care of the end gap issue and the rings will be correct for the size bore you're going to install them in. So there's no need to remove them. However, many of our customers, both on the motorsports side and the stock side, they buy a piston, they buy a box of rings, they want to check the end gap before they put it in. In that case, don't install the rings on your piston. Take one ring at a time, one compression ring, and push it down into the top of the cylinder. Then what I do, and most engine builders do, is we turn the piston around and we use it, of course, without the rings, and we push that other ring down about an inch into the bore. And this piston, when I push it down, keeps it nice and square. And then once I have it down in the bore about an inch, I take a little feeler gauge, and they are conveniently marked both in inches and metric, and I take my feeler gauge and I measure the end gap on that ring. And that measurement, when I can just get the gauge to slide in there, will be the end gap of this ring. It might be on a uh, 6.4 Hemi, it might be say 22 thousandths on that top ring. Now, if the end gap is too small, what I have to do is I have to take that ring and use a special machine called a ring filer, and the ring filer allows me to open up the end gap. It's a very common practice on performance rings, many of which come with no gap whatsoever, and you have to file every one of those rings before you install it in the bore. Now the proper end gap rule of thumb is four thousandths per inch of bore, but that's really just a rough rule of thumb. Posted along with this video will be a link to a technical bulletin that will give you more exact definitions on end gaps for different types of engines, stock engines, naturally attuated engines, uh, power adder engines, all sorts of different things. So that bulletin will be included along with this video. Thanks for choosing Molly. Thanks for tuning in.